Hello, it's Tuesday, June 2nd, and welcome to Minutes That Matter. Well, yesterday we began talking about a difficult subject matter, racism. It's difficult for several contributing factors. It's difficult because of our country's history towards groups of people such as African Americans, Native Americans, and Asian Americans. Former structures that were meant to suppress groups of people still have their lingering effects within society decades after their dismantle. Many people's attitudes have fundamentally changed for the better, but the flip side is, is they don't see the problem because it doesn't exist in their hearts. But then you have the most fundamentally dysfunctional contributing factor, sin and man-centered wisdom. You see, sin drives both the hatred and the sinful response to that hatred. A man-centered approach to a solution gives no lasting peace. And so yesterday, we began looking at biblically-derived approaches to help lead us to a more lasting solution. Well, yesterday, we learned that God desires his people to seek justice and correct oppression. And Proverbs informed us that this begins by listening. Well, I, I hope you are seeking out friends and reading articles that inform you of the fear that certain groups of people feel and the bigotry that they've experienced in their life, as well as what they view as the solutions to those problems. But today, I want to take the next step on the path towards a biblical solution. How we respond when things don't go well. God tells us in Ephesians 4.29, let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths, but only such as is good for building up, as fits the occasion, that it may give grace to those who hear. You see, in the face of hurt and pain and suffering, in the face of watching others respond in anger and violence, it's tempting to respond in, in a way that doesn't help the situation but makes things worse. God's plan for reconciliation is clear. It begins by putting off speech that attacks people. We don't tear walls down by erecting another one in its place. We don't bring people to the table of reconciliation by calling them names and making accusations against their character and, and the intent of their heart. Verse 30 of Ephesians 4 identifies the nature of sinful speech that we must put off. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you, along with all malice. God says that, we sit down with one another and identify the problem and then work to make a plan to overcome that problem. He says, but only such as is good for building up as fits the occasion, that it may give grace to those who hear. You see, we step onto the path of reconciliation when we seek to build up one another rather than tear each other down. He says, let us put on the attributes of verse 32 of that same chapter. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ forgave you. Well, friends, we can begin to find a more permanent God-centered solution to hate, injustice, and oppression when we follow his structure for reconciliation. Let us listen to one another and speak to one another with kindness and love and forgiveness. Uh, let us attack problems and not people, while we seek then to find answers that build one another up. Well, again, if this was an encouragement to you, hit the thumbs up button. If you're not yet a subscriber, hit the subscribe button. Hit the little bell button if you want to know when a new video comes out. And again, uh, I want us to, to continue to do something different this week. Would you please consider sharing this post on your social media page? Let us use the megaphone of social media to motivate believers in Christ to be salt and light in this area of our culture. Well, from all of us at Minutes That Matter, have a blessed day. Mm -hmm.